Greetings Internet, DDA here, and we are going to show you everything you need to know to level your Sorceress in the new Season of the Construct Season 3 of Diablo 4. Now, of course, I already have my Passion Pirate that I'm calling him, my, my new Fire Sorceress that I've made in the season, but I just want to show you quickly what you're going to want to do when you um, make a new character in the game to make sure that you're getting the, um, you know, the settings right when you load in. So I'll just run through this real quick. But you wanna, of course, make sure you hit the skip campaign. That's very important. Um, obviously, if you haven't completed the campaign yet, you may need to complete it. But definitely hit that skip campaign so you're not forced into running the campaign. And then you'll hit start game. And then it's gonna ask you whether you wanna go on the seasonal or eternal realm. Of course, it's automatically selecting seasonal. So, but you know, just make sure that you have seasonal selected. Hit continue and then it's going to ask you whether you want to start on world tier one or world tier two i would probably recommend if you have the altars of lilith and you have all those skill points um you got the renown done that you start on world tier two because you're going to be super powerful in the early game uh, and it'll give you extra experience however if you don't have the altars if you don't have the renown probably start on world tier one because it might world tier two might be a little too challenging but, you know, if you're a seasoned veteran uh, ARPG player, you might just be able to start on World Tier 2. So how we're going to structure this leveling video is I'm actually going to literally level my character and then check in with you every 10 levels and tell you what the most important things for you to consider while you're leveling during those 10 levels. So to start out at level 1, uh, if you do have the Renown, you'll start with 10 available skill points. Uh, I see most of the leveling guides online are using Arclash, which I understand uh, why they're using Arclash. It's a pretty good ability. I actually like to use Firebolt instead, and there are a couple of reasons why. One, because um, it's ranged, and I don't like how Arclash forces me to play melee. Two, uh, it actually generates you more mana because of the flickering Firebolt. Well, for two reasons it generates you more mana. The flickering Firebolt, and then as well, the enhanced Firebolt firebolt pierces through burning enemies so it's actually going to hit more enemies so it actually may be higher dps because you're using it from range it's um, going through burning enemies and uh you know as we'll talk about later we're going to use firewall in this build for the main leveling so being that we're also using firebolt i also really like the glinting firebolt because firebolt increases the burning damage you deal to an enemy by 25 percent that's an that's a 25 percent multiplier you're getting on your firewall for free and when you when you're early game and you don't have a lot of gear and you don't have a lot of aspects that 25 percent multiplier is massive so we're going to start by putting three points into firebolt just taking all the way to flickering for the mana and then uh, likewise we are going to do fireball all the way to greater fireball because fireball inevitably once we hit 15 will be our first enchantment once we get there and then i like the greater because we're not going to be our crit is really low early game like this is good damage when we have a substantial amount of crit but this is consistent damage so we're going to do that instead and then likewise you're going to grab teleport and then grab frost nova and take it all the way to mystical frost nova for the vulnerable frost nova is good because you're going to have a ton of mobs running at you and um, the early access to vulnerability is great because that's an extra 50 percent damage that you that you just add you know any multiplicative or any really just any damage that we can add early game is going to be great for us and then of course you just want teleport because that's going to help you move around and help you level in general so now if you don't have the renown done and you start with only one skill point you're still going to follow the same path it's just going to be slower right it's going to take you to level 10 to get to what you see here so yep starting out on your bar you're just going to have teleport and frost nova and firebolt and fireball now the first 10 levels go super quick so i would recommend just focusing on the season journey the season journey unlocks a ton of aspects in the codex for you so it's going to be great for you to do that, um, you know, and just focusing on the season journey, getting the, the Seneschal construct, getting those uh, stones starting to level and everything. It's going to be much better for you. And there's a lot of mob density, too, in the dungeons and with all the seasonal content. So it's great for your leveling. So, of course, the seasonal, I mean, you're going to load in and, and see the green quest, you, you know, just follow the green quest. It, it does start in Gee Cool. 
So you should load the game in at Geekool, but if you don't, you'll have to go there and just follow the green quest. If you ever lose what you're track of what you're doing, just open your map and then click on Q or click on this this um, you know this arrow here to open up your quest menu. And then either just looking at your general journal, you'll see your your seasonal quest here in green. Or just clicking over to your priority quest you'll see that as well be sure as you're running around you are picking up these herbs you're going to need the herbs to level up your potion and you're likewise going to need the herbs to just create elixirs create everything so i always make sure i grab these so you can see i'm already level four levels go super quick in the beginning um and i'm just i'm simply just maxing out fireball for maximum damage and the other thing is, is like as you pick up gear like you'll pick up gray and blue gear just you know if i see green numbers in the early game i'm just i'm just putting it on i'm not worrying too much about stats you're going to be replacing gear incredibly quickly so don't worry about it too much if you see green throw it on you know c plus armor c plus dps just throw it on so your frost nova is there to fight elites mostly so you see just i'm gonna burst this guy down really really quick bam, 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 thank you. frost nova is super great for your burst damage also make sure you're picking up everything because you're gonna need the salvage materials to upgrade your gear you know Upgrading your weapon increases your DPS a lot, so you definitely want to make sure that you're doing that um, periodically, more so when you hit like after level 10, I would say. Like, I mainly focus on it after I hit level 20, but you're going to need those materials, so make sure you're picking up everything whites, blues, everything. So, I just unlocked my Seneschal construct. So, if you open your inventory, you'll see here you have this window here, the Seneschal construct that you can go to now. And you start with um, just one governing stone, the lightning bolt. So, just throw that into your, um, your ranged ability here. And then you start with two tuning stones as well the mockery support and the electrocution support. So, just throw those in. You can see they're under the modifiers. Um, if I hover over lightning bolt, it says that it taunts enemies and 50% of the damage damage is applied as lightning so i know that they're active plus if you look at um the active governing stones at the bottom of the tuning stone there's a little green check by it that shows you that you can use this tuning stone with that governing stone so i just wanted to know how much damage the traps do uh in the seasonal vaults and during the seasonal quest like i just got to this area i've already done this once on my barbarian so i know that this is coming so you know teleport's going to be really important here the whole area is going to fill with fire and you're definitely going to want to try to get to these you can see how much damage the the traps do now you can just run through this whole area if like you have flame shield or if you're just you just want to pot spam you can certainly do that um i probably will just just for show to showcase how you can just do it like you know you can just you can pot spam through it it's fine um but it does do a lot of damage so that's definitely noteworthy so I just hit level 10 uh, super fast, about 20 minutes. I mean, it really, really quick. Um, and I did actually respec when I hit level. Well, actually, I respec after I got access to Firewall. Because like I said, we're using Firewall as our main leveling damage for a couple of reasons. One, if you just look at the base damage, Firewall does 160% weapon damage. Compare that to, say, Fireball, that only does 60 weapon damage so it's it's over double the weapon damage so that and also it's really mana efficient and only costs 30 mana and then it has the firewall on the ground that mobs will run into so and it's really high aoe damage um you know as you're moving around and as like mobs are spawning and everything it allows you to stack firewalls really high aoe damage just really efficient for your leveling and, and it doesn't take much investment like things like meteor or fireball they need uniques they need at certain aspects to really start scaling scaling their damage especially in the case of like fireball and meteors case you need high critical strike to have you know really really take off with those builds so firewall doesn't need much high base damage um, that's why we're running it so like i said i did respec so you know make sure that you enhance all the way to mages firewall um you can go wizards if you want the increased mana regeneration, but I just want more damage. I'm just maxing damage to the nines because that is what gives you your leveling speed uh, damage. Now, uh, you know, going to the defensive abilities, I still have the Frost Nova uh, with the Vulnerable because I definitely want that. I maxed out Glass Cannon uh, because, and I took points out of Fireball. Like, I took most of my points out of Fireball. I left some in there just because I know that's going to be my first enchantment slot. 
but I took most of the points out of Fireball just to throw into Glass Cannon and then throw into Elemental Dominance. Elemental Dominance is not going to add a crazy amount of damage because it's not going to be active always, but you should be able to cast like two Firewalls before getting below the 50 mana threshold, especially if you're weaving in, and I did switch to the Glinting Firebolt for the increased burning damage, especially if you're weaving in the fire bolt in between your fire walls, which you should because you're going to be limited by mana early game. And this, again, the 25% multiplicative is huge for you. Now, I don't have flame shield yet uh, because I'm focusing on scaling my damage and I'm mostly interested in scaling damage. Now, if you were a hardcore character, you probably want to grab flame shield pretty early um, and probably even grab shimmering teleport as well for the extra DR. I'm not grabbing those because I'm focusing on damage. I'm not, I'm a softcore character and I'm just focused on damage for maximum leveling speed. But if I was afraid of dying on hardcore, I would definitely grab flame shield and definitely, definitely grab shimmering teleport. Just wanted to note also that something you'll run into a lot when you're leveling. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference, like what's higher DPS, a wand focus or a staff. And what you actually have to do is you have to take the one-hander and the off-hand and add the DPS together. So you can see here, I have, like, for when I had my staff in, it the tooltip said it was minus. But when I actually go and equip it, them both, it actually says the staff is lower damage then. So it can, it can sometimes be confusing, um, you know, if you have a staff equipped comparing the values. You just have to add the DPS together for these two items to really compare it. Still cruising on the leveling. Now, I definitely wanted to mention, like, look at how much, look at how much damage these traps do. Uh, you, this is, like, still doing the seasonal quest. You have to be aware of whenever these, you know, you see these pillars and they're shooting out. There, there are other ones, too, that shoot out, like, spikes, like bone spikes. Uh, so you have to be aware and watch those out. <laughs> watch for those, you know, watch for explosions, because apparently there are explosions when you open chests too. Just saw that. So you just cannot let this stuff hit you. It's good practice uh, because you're going to want to run the vaults and not get hit by the traps at all. So it's good to start now. Just focus on never getting hit by these traps because you're going to have to really do that uh, when you start doing the stuff with the, the potent wardings and the, the chests of wardings. So it's good to practice now. Another good thing to note is while you're leveling, if you're looking for upgrades quickly, it's good to hit this sort button because it will sort items in order of item level. So it, it's really quick for you to like say, like compare, like, oh, let's see, you know, that's my best item level focus. This is my best item level wand. So if I add these two together, I get 130. So that's less than the staff I'm using. So I still want to use the staff. So once you get into a certain point of the season journey, the gate hall is going to have all the normal shops for you. So that's good. You know, the main season area has pretty much everything. This little forge man over here, this little construct boy, he's your blacksmith. So that's, that's all good. And like I said, you're going to pretty much want to salvage everything. Let me just check to see if I don't have higher DPS. 75. It actually is a little bit higher DPS, so I'm going to switch these out real quick. And then, of course, I'm just going to salvage. Salvage all. You're going to need these items. You're going to need these to upgrade. So you can, at this point, like once you get, like what am I, level 13? Once you get around level 15, you can start, say, upgrading your, your weapon. You know, just throw, like maybe one upgrade in your weapon. It's only seven of the basic material and 500 gold, really, really simple. You know, you're, you can see I have very, very little silver ores because I'm not getting many magic items right now. So I probably wouldn't uh, upgrade it twice yet until maybe you get more like a better rare, uh, rare weapon, like more towards level 20, but throwing an upgrade in both, just a single upgrade into both your weapons early, early game will just help you just increase your DPS. Now, once you get your basic Senate's Jaw construct unlocked and you have like two items, you know, you, there's no real reason, like once you start moving around in the open world to do these these uh, these obelisks that you see, you know, you do dodge, try to, <laughs> try to dodge everything. Get in and you have to click on it. This is like, this, these fire, this fire is really annoying. Flame shield would really help here if I had flame shield because I could just hit flame shield and then use it, which I might add flame shield pretty soon um, to, to be able to do that. But you get the elemental cores when you activate those obelisks. So, and then you actually use the elemental cores um, with these, you know, see the arcane tremors. 
gather cores from elemental obelisks and deposit them into brazers to provoke the heralds of malthus so you can start collecting the elemental cores at this point just while you're moving through so once you hit level 15 which i just did you definitely want to stop what you're doing and go do the enchantment quest for the sorcerer now the reason you're going to want to do this is it adds so much damage and so much just so much damage to and adds to your leveling speed so you definitely want to literally drop what you're doing immediately go and do that get your enchantment slot so of course your enchantment slot quest is this sorcerer legacy legacy of the magi here it's going to be rated oh i i can actually run there so i can get this waypoint right here and then i can just run there so it's right outside kyovishad um so you just run down get that get your enchantment unlocked asap now your enchantment quest is going to send you into this lost archive dungeon so now you're not going to have to complete the whole dungeon to get your enchantment uh slot but if you do want to unlock the aspect of the protector, it would be good for you to complete the dungeon. So that's what I'm going to do just in case I want to use the aspect of the protector on like my helm or something like that just to add a little bit of damage, you know, with the barrier. So I'm just going to run through the whole dungeon, but you don't actually need to if you have no intention of using this codex. There's no you could just stop when you complete the quest. I'm not ready yet. See, like there i'm just so happy that i had the ranged firebolt there and I'm, I'm not forced into melee with arc lash i just i prefer it so another thing you can do to compare quickly like whether or not you should be switching between staff or, or wand focus is see like i just got this staff that's 173 dps so if i cut that in half you know it's like 86 so i know i need to both to have around 86 dps for me to even start the comparison so it's a quick way like just cut it in half and then you can quickly like decide like i just have this wand here well that's 88 so that could be higher but i need a better focus in order for it to be higher woohoo so we just got our enchantment unlocked that's great so the first enchantment of course is going to be fireball this is gonna whenever you kill an enemy they're going to explode great for aoe damage great for speed clearing so great for leveling so another thing i would recommend is i would definitely recommend you keep every legendary that you find and do not salvage it because you never know you can always salvage it later and if you want the materials so that's an always an option for you but you can't unsalvage something and you don't know what your mid to end game build is going to be you know you may find an amazing unique like i may find the staff of liam and just like want to do a charge bolt build for a little bit just while i'm leveling you know that's that's the po that's a possibility so you know just always keep the aspects I found very many aspects at a max level, early level, so just keep the legendaries until you get to more like mid game and you then you can decide to salvage them at that point. So I found a friend, uh, level 49, who was just you know rolling this uh, this brazier here and we've just been kind of both putting in our cores and just rolling uh, the perils of Malthus. A bunch of really, really good for your leveling. You're getting a ton of levels from this. I always mess that up because like they're immune to they're immune to everything in the first time like that. But yeah, so really great for your leveling, especially if you can find a friend like I am. Uh Harold's a magic a little bit. But, um, yeah, like I'm about to hit 20 already and just I gained most of my levels from the last few minutes just being here and running these razors. So really good. You see it it will say your screen will say and you'll see the You'll see like the pulsating on the screen um, on your map. So if you see that, definitely run over and do it. I'm gonna do it one more time just to hit 20. There's only, and there, there is a cooldown associated with it. It's about maybe 10 seconds, it's not too long. Um, so you can see, we're just gonna roll it again. Get lots of levels. So I just hit level 20 in about an hour and a half. Uh, I'd probably do it quicker if I didn't fight that world boss and if I was not stopping to record segments of the video. So I just wanted to talk about what I'm working with so far. So we have flame firewall max out and we are doing the mages firewall. I think it's better because the mobs move around a lot. And then we did uh, max out inferno all the way to supreme inferno. Mana is an issue uh, early game. So this will help 
with spam, uh, just being able to have that extra mana. I did throw a point in a fiery surge because again, I want mana. I want to start getting more mana so I can spam more firewalls. So I'm going to end up maxing this out before I get my combustion key passive. And then likewise, I did throw the point into flame shield. I think it's really good when getting the altars. Um, you know, they have those abilities that push you back. So it's really easy to hit flame shield, run up and grab the elemental core real quick. Still got the one point in a teleport, three points in a glass cannon. Still rocking with the fully, um, you know, upgraded Frost Nova for the vulnerable. Got my three points in elemental dominance. And then one point in a fireball upgraded to greater. Because whenever it does explode, it's going to get all the burning, 10% of all the burning damage that you've applied with the fireball, uh, the firewall. So uh, this is going to add a lot of consistency to your damage uh, with the fireball. Uh, ball enchantment which we are using and then likewise i really like the firebolt because the glinting firebolt adds a ton of damage to firewall this 25 multiplicative you see it be applied and it's actually really easy to hit everything with firebolt because firebolt pierces through burning enemies so you just you you just summon a firewall everything is burning and one firebolt will go through everything and just apply this 25 percent multiplicative really really good so I'm loving this setup right now. So just a little quick note here that, that confused me just a little. Uh, you know, the, this Cool's Heart quest, you have to search the vaults for Zoltan Cool's journals, but you actually have to do the Smothered at Atch first to find a way into the Vault of Stone. So they, they don't really tell you that, but you, you should do this quest first because you need to go into the vaults to do this quest. So I just wanted to show here are those like I guess spikes, bone spikes, I don't know what you want to call them. They do a ton of damage, so it's kind of hard to see them against the contrast of the floor. So you really got to look out for these. Like, I just, I'll show you how much damage they do. It took about maybe 10 to 20% of my HP per hit, maybe 15. Um, so just be careful, because like I said, there's a lot of them. So like, if I stand like in the center here, I'll get, I'll get... Uh, hit pretty, like a lot yeah you can see like if you're not paying attention you can get hit a lot by those and like i said they're difficult to see so you gotta look out for them now some of the seasonal quests are gated to your level for example you need to unlock the jeweler and create one of these uh uncertain seneschal stone catches for to complete one of the quests i just did that you'll so you'll need to be level 20 to unlock the jeweler but i mean i'm well over leveled i'm 27 you run a couple of the brazers with some friends or with just random people in the overworld, you'll be well over leveled for the, the seasonal quest line. Now, I just completed my first whisper. Uh, whenever possible, I always try to do the whispers because you actually get a ton of experience by doing whispers. Let's see. Now, this is world tier one. Let's just see. I'll grab a ring. Bam. Look at that. I got oh, like half a level. So always do the whispers whenever you can. So we just hit level 30, and this is the level where you want to start paying attention to your stats a little bit on your gear. Not too crazy. Like, for example, I found these pants that have plus one firewall. That will help me out. I found a decent ring with vulnerable damage and plus damage over time, so that's good too. So like I said, like pay attention a little, but you don't need to go crazy with anything. And then for your skills uh, up to level 30, I got uh, combustion in here. So that that's just because we're, we're leveling with firewall. That'll increase your burning damage. I have three points into fiery surge and three points into endless pyre. Endless pyre for the damage and then fiery surge for the mana. You just really want to max out damage and mana while leveling because that's going to be your most important stats for, for, for clearing and for just running through. I upgraded Inferno all the way to Supreme Inferno for the spam. And of course, I'm still sitting with maxed out Firewall. I additionally, the last points that I added in were three into Inner Flames for increased damage on Inferno. I mean, on Firewall while all Pyre skills uh, when I'm healthy. And then my very last point I added was at one point in Elemental Attunement because it's going to start to matter. Your defensive skills are going to start to matter much more once you get up like above level 30 because I'm going to actually my next points are going to be upgrading flame shield all the way to mystical flame shield. I think the uh, movement speed is going to be really important in the vaults uh, with flame shield moving around like running through the traps and things like that and then mystical just for helping with spam and mana. So because I am level 30 I did unlock my second enchantment slot. 
I think what I'm gonna throw in there is probably firewall. I think firewall will just be good. Like it's not gonna trigger a ton, uh, but it's just simple. Like we're scaling firewall, and you know we're not we don't have a crazy amount of lucky hit, so it's not gonna trigger like a lot. But when it does trigger, it's gonna add a lot to your damage. So why not? One thing I will say is that I'm really enjoying the seasonal quest line. Uh, they added a lot of quests in here and a lot of content. So like I'm level 30 at just in a very short amount of time. And, you know, the seasonal quest is still going on. It's going to take me probably all the way to the capstone dungeon, which is great. Which means like you'll be able to just run the seasonal quest or in the, and the seasonal content all the way up until world tier 3 at a minimum. So that is great. I'm loving it so far. So level 30, I feel, is also when you want to start paying attention to the Codex of Power. You do unlock the Occultus at level 25, but you're going to be replacing gear really often. Um, so I wouldn't really worry about it until about level 30. I'm going to make sure I get some Codex Powers uh, in before I try the Capstone Dungeon, just to make it a little easier for myself. The thing to pay attention to is... In your jewelry slots it's really easy for you to not replace jewelry because you only get a little resistance and resistance doesn't really matter until you get to world tier 4 so you can kind of keep your jewelry in there for a very long time and like not replace your aspects so you can really get maximum use out of spending those materials on the codex of power because you don't have that many materials to work with so that what you pick and choose is going to be really important so I would recommend filling out your jewelry slots first, like your rings. Actually, maybe only one resource on my ring. I think I was thinking about two, but I think I can get away with just having one. And, I, and that one, I think, is probably going to be the Prodigy as soon as I find you. Yep, right here. So the Prodigy aspect, I think this is going to be my first one. So if you just see, you can uh, left click to pin on map. So if you, I just pin that to the map, then if I just go to my map, It'll, it'll tell me exactly where to go. It's really nice. So right here, the um, the Witch wa Water Dungeon to unlock the prodigy, prodigy aspect. I think that's going to be my first one on my ring. So for the next two, on so like I said, I'm going to fill out my jewelry slots first. And then I'm going to consider doing other ones. And we'll just have to see how much resources I actually have to work with. So I'm going to unlock these three just for my jewelry. And then we'll work from there. But for my next two, I think I'm going to go with Edge Masters. Uh, just skills deal increased damage with uh, the amount of primary resource you have So that's really nice to use with inferno because when you inferno It's very easy for you to stay at maximum mana and get that maximum 10% multiplicative So if I just mark this pin here Just uh, that is where it says old stones right up here next to Saragar So old stones right there to unlock edge master. So I'm going to be doing that as well then for my final codex aspect that I'm going to unlock for my amulet, I'm going to want to put the maximum damage aspect on my amulet, and that is going to be the aspect of control. And the reason I'm doing this is because along with Frost Nova, so you can use Frost Nova to freeze to activate this damage, but now that I'm level 30 and I got most of my tree filled out like to maximize my damage and my mana regeneration, I'm going to start filling in other points so you can put some points into the the immobilize activation on the on your pyromancy skills to get this immobilized as well so you can activate the immobilize to activate aspect of control and activate your frost nova frozen to activate this as well so on your amulet this is going to be great it's going to do over 30 percent multiplicative so that's definitely going to be my next one so that i just pinned it it is over all the way over here right next to look the iron wolves encampment the sunken library so that's that's going to be i'm going to be doing that as well to unlock these three and then go from there so i did just get my three codexes of power and actually doing the codexes of power is a lot cheaper than i uh, remember so i like i said i found this decent amulet with pyromancy skill damage really whenever i find like the jewelry i'm just looking for plus damage at this point I'm not looking for anything fancy like plus skills, although I could just see how much does it take to actually enchant this thing? 27 and two veiled crystals. No, I'm not doing that. Now forget that. We're gonna replace that fast enough, but we are gonna put this aspect on there. Codex of Power just got this bad boy. Aspect of control. Look at that. Only 10 like surprised. Only 10 veiled crystals. Like it's a lot. 
but I have 75, so that's not too bad. So put that on. That is going to make that amazing. Then likewise, I got critical strike chance and plus fire damage. So super good there. Going to throw on the edge masters. 10 veiled crystals again. And then likewise, this guy, we got vulnerable damage and damage to distant enemies. Not bad. And that is going to be our prodigy. So for the extra mana, super good there. So it takes about 30 Veiled Crystals to fill out. Um, and there, there are other Codexes of Power that I'm going to unlock. So it looks like in order to do the Storm Swell aspect, you're going to have to do the Stronghold, the Onyx Watchtower. So I think I'm level, what, 33 now. So it's going to be pretty easy for me to do a 35 Stronghold. But if you were like super low level, you'd have to wait a little bit. Likewise, to get the Flame Walker aspect on, in the Codex, you have to do Nost the Nostrava Stronghold. It's level 37, but I'm level 35 now. I'm just rolling. Uh, I'm getting stronger and stronger now that I'm putting these aspects into my gear, and I just feel like this is a cakewalk now, to be honest with you. So it looks like I got um, all the Codex of Powers that I wanted. I managed to throw Might on these plus two Firewall pants that I got. Feeling just really, really strong. Level 36. And um, uh, my items, my item level, it looks like above, like item level maybe 400, maybe 410, is where they start to require the legendary item to put in the Codex of Power. So if I like, if I try to put my Storm Swell on these uh, gloves, it's going to require a Corling Ward, uh, which I could do, but I'm hesitant to do that because uh, i only found i think five or six legendary items so far so i don't really want to waste it um yet so i'm gonna wait uh and just kind of save up and i'm also another thing that i'm doing now is i am upgrading my weapons twice uh two times i'm still not upgrading them three times because i want to save the magic item the like the silver i think it's like a silver ore or something like that I don't have too, too many of those, so I want to save it. So I'm just upgrading twice. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish out the seasonal quest and then try the capstone dungeon. I stopped picking up white items, but I am still picking up blue items because, again, I don't have many of the blue materials, so I'm still picking those up. All right, so we just hit 40, completed the seasonal quest. I just want to reiterate how amazing leveling in the seasonal area is it is insane i got three levels there in a blink the monster density is just crazy there are tons of people running around uh like i said three levels in a blink that's why i'm level 40 i just couldn't stop like when you see the heralds of malthus have summoned in the area i can't resist i have to go over and kill them so yeah that's what's been happening that, that's why i'm level 40 but we're definitely going to do the capstone dungeon right now so to just go over the points that we've added uh so far so the first points that we added is we added three in a precision magic i figured at this point since we're using the firewall enchantment which has been working out great it does activate sometimes like not a crazy amount but it'll activate once every 10 to 20 seconds which is i guess good enough for me precision magic is in there to help that trigger just a little bit more we did add one into align the elements and three into protection because we did get the storm swell aspect in our codex so this is going to be the way that we activate barrier and have barriers to activate our storm swell so we got three points into that and we also put two points into crippling flames because we want to activate our control aspect as much as possible and that's it for your your level 40 update i'm going to see you back at the final conclusion of the video at level 50. all right we did it level 50 leveling guide complete for the firewall sorcerer uh it took me probably around i don't know i took my time i i did the seasonal quest line um, maybe like seven hours uh, it took me to level the 50. Definitely the best leveling, the fastest leveling in my opinion, is summoning the Heralds of Malthus uh, and then doing the Whispers in the, that area. As soon as I jumped to World Tier 3, which I did at level 40, um, doing the Capstone Dungeon at level 40, pretty easy. I did die once during the final, final boss just because I let his 
giant wave hit me once uh and it did a lot of damage and it ended up killing me so that was my single death for the entire run of the level one through 50 really good i would say final thoughts on the season from what i what i've seen a lot of people are hating on the Seneschal Construct. Uh, I don't really agree, I'll be honest with you. I think the Seneschal does a lot of damage. I think it moves fast. It keeps up with me even when I teleport and run around. Um, it's keeping up. It's doing good damage. And it actually can even tank for you too, which I it is great. You know, Especially for me, like being a sorcerer, I love when something can tank for me. I think most people are just kind of upset that they don't have the power that they had in, with the vampiric powers which is understandable, but remember how powerful we were in season one with the Barber Heart. Uh, that was a huge power decrease as well. So this is what's gonna happen season to season. Some seasons we're gonna be more powerful, some seasons we're gonna be less powerful. But as a final build, the final points that I put into, the first points that I did, I maxed out uh, Mana Shield and then maxed out uh, protection as well. I also made sure that I had my points into mystical and enhanced flame shield. Then likewise, I got my points. I maxed out crippling f flames, uh, you know, to activate that control glyph. And then for my final, final two points, I put two points into warmth just for a little bit of healing. And then for the Paragon board, since I actually had, you know, the 25 points, I don't have a single glyph yet. Oh, I actually, I guess I do have, I guess I do have these magic glyphs. Hey, this is what magic glyphs are, are useful for, right? There you go, plus 1% damage. Uh, but yeah, so I just did this like L formation with the rare notes just to get my, I need more dexterity to unlock this, but just to get my, you know, resist all and your non-physical damage, like just a, a good power boost here. Nothing too fancy. So the build is really strong. Firewall. I mean, we got that new unique, right? We're all chasing the the Starfall coordinate. I'm going to be chasing it. I hope you enjoyed this leveling ple video. Please let me know in the comments section if you would like me to do this style of leveling video every season. Please hit that like button if you like this video. And as always, turn your dial to Random Number Gaming for weekly updates on Diablo 4.